black people are less likely to seek mental health support because of the stigma. Because many of them, when they seek mental health support, they don't really get it. There's always a suspect that, oh, maybe you have an addiction issue. There's other issues um, that comes into forth rather than actually treating uh, the individuals that sought your services as they are as a patient rather than uh, racializing or criminalizing them. Um, there's, there's not much of a culturally appropriate mental health services um, because many cultures, including the Somali culture, they look at, there's a lot of stigma, obvious cultural stigma around mental health, but they also look at mental health as a form of what can we do as a community? What are the alternative forms of community and traditions that we can incorporate, including faith-based, because if you look at Islamic history, um, actually the first mental health hospital in human history was built um, a couple of hundred years ago in Iraq by a Muslim empire, right? By Muslim scientists and doctors. And so we have a very long traditions in our own history um, of dealing with mental health, but there's a disconnect that kind of an education and historical nuance within our, our own tradition. And so in terms of mental health, it's really, it's very much complex and nuanced and mental health is determined by your income, uh, it could be your neighborhood, a violence, gun violence, death of a loved one has a tremendous impact on your mental well-being, um, struggling financially, uh, the sense of taking away somebody's dignity, which is really something that impacted a lot of Somali fathers who were not able to get a decent income to support their families, uh, which also contributed to the breakdown of a lot of Somali families where fathers left the home and the mothers had to handle uh, there's a study recently released that black mothers or black women are more likely to suffer from cardiac arrest or heart disease than compared to black men because many times the Somali community are not unique in the black community. Black women are really the backbone of the black community and many of them take on a lot of roles that they shouldn't really take on but they have to in spite of it because they have to deal with their community, they have to deal with their children and they have to step up in places where a partner doesn't exist or an, a, a black or Somali father or whomever and is not there for them. Uh, Faisal, you can, if you would like to add anything to that. Anything yes, to I, that? Think, I think Gordon said uh, very articulately and have um, explained in more detail and that, that is the case. And I think that also I can add that on the, when the, um, the Somali community arrived here, it's true that they were not welcome. And this was the liberal policy of John Crochet and Paul Martin, and also they even went farther uh, targeting the Afghanis and the Somalis by simply denying them the opportunity to settle here. And it's true that the systemic racism that been, um, as soon as they arrived here, that have been uh, targeted continues to this day at schools, lack of opportunities. And this is not just, uh, it didn't happen. Uh, uh, it just was designed and this is also a system where a discrimination is, is founded and deeply rooted in its structures uh, of, of governance and systems. But the Somalis, because of, of that um, challenges of waiting for 10 years, majority of those people who could not wait for 10 years, they just crossed the border and have settled in, in, in the United States and other cities in the South and uh, they're doing much better than those who have, of the, whom have the, uh, that they've left here. But I think uh, it's an opportunity now of the community to be uplifted, being also uh, provided uh, um, uh, specific uh, programs and ways we can help them to give hope uh, and help. And that way we can actually uh, provide more uh, catered programs, such as jobs and opportunities, especially young people early on. You know, a lot of young people are now uh, also losing their lives in the streets of Toronto. And uh, that's also something uh, we want to, to come to uh, an end to it. And I do believe it's a systemic um, and, and, and that also we want to tackle it in, in a systemic way and understand why it's happening. It's not just because it's gang related. Uh, and, and, and when that happens also, how come they're not stopped? How come they're not protected? And that's also another concern of systemic um, uh, racism that exists. And what we need to do is to provide and also listen to the community. And nobody listens to the community, what they want and what are their needs are. And that's why we had uh, 
um, the last 15 years, which was simply uh, not um, uh, helping the community, but just taking also their votes for granted. It's also uh, the Liberal uh, Party that has, has, has simply, you know, uh, have not invested a single project in the community. You can look it for yourself. And since Junker Chair to the even uh, Trudeau, I don't see even any single program that we can see that's helping this community. And that's why even one community in Ottawa have recently applied um, um, uh, um, um, a program that the federal government uh, designed. And they said that you are not black enough. Because they said this was a program, uh, they, uh, they encouraged uh, a black community to apply. So I really wrote a letter to that minister and the minister happens to be a Somali Canadian in that ministry. They said they're going to correct it, but uh, with my letter, they haven't to this day respond to me what the actions were taken where and how they have addressed that issue. And I haven't reached the organization yet if they have actually gotten uh, the funding or not. So we have, uh, it doesn't matter who is the minister, you have a system rooted into a uh, systemic racism and you need to change them to do that you need strong leadership to tackle these issues and it shouldn't be happening an organization that have a track record when they apply uh, a government fundings that they've been told you're not black enough that's unacceptable because black uh, to me it means a couple of things in a north american definition uh, to some of us uh, uh, we see it as as a color and some some of us see it as a race and and, and but uh, you see yourself as a black because of your color and then you have also multiple identities and some folks uh, it's also uh, both it could be a race it could be color but still uh, you can't simply uh, discriminate someone uh, you know uh, on that basis and i think uh, we owe it to the community that the minister uh, be transparent and explains to us uh, uh, that exactly what he has done with regard to that issue. 